Greetings, calculus scholars. Uh, so this is day two of Women's Whipped Asymptotes, skill eight. Uh, so today we're gonna focus on horizontal asymptotes, a little bit more in terms of the equation perspective rather than the graph perspective today. Um, so the idea of horizontal asymptotes, I'm just gonna like draw a picture here for you. So here's a graph. Uh, so we may have like a, a rational function. Maybe this is like, you know, y equals one. That's like a horizontal asymptote. Uh, what we, oh man, that's a bad graph. Let me just uh, erase that here for a second. Let's get it looking a little bit better. So maybe my axis is over here. And there's probably like some type of vertical asymptote as well, but we're just gonna focus on the horizontal. Uh, so we're looking at, with these horizontal asymptotes, the X value, so these are the limits as X approaches plus or minus infinity of F of X. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. What happens when we're evaluating the limit as X approaches, not F of X approaches, but as X approaches plus or minus infinity. So I wanna go um, and compare pre-calc with calc. And I'm actually gonna give you as your first skill on Delta math for this skill, um, just the exercise of um, finding horizontal asymptotes, because if you can do that, like in the pre-calc sense, you can also evaluate limits as X approaches plus or minus infinity. So in pre-calc, we call these horizontal asymptotes and calculus, this is the limit as X approaches plus or minus infinity. And I, I would argue that these are essentially uh, the same thing. Uh, so in pre-calc, you wanna make sure that both the top and the bottom are in standard form. And we had rules. And rather than subject you to my handwriting, I have the rules uh, written out here. You can see them side by side. Um, so this says that if the degree in the numerator, so like the x, the highest exponent in the numerator is less than the highest exponent in the denominator. And then this is uh, highest exponent and denominator, this one. Um, the horizontal asymptote is the x-axis. In other words, y equals zero. Now let's read the calculus equivalent. If the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, then the limit is zero. So basically, only difference is that we now have the language of calculus and we have limit as X approaches plus or minus infinity. All right, then if we have um, a degree in the numerator equaling the degree of the denominator, then the limit is the ratio of the coefficients of the highest degree. In pre-calc, we didn't call it the limit, we just said compute the horizontal asymptote. And then um, if we have a degree in the numerator higher than the degree in the denominator, uh, then that limit does not exist. Um, and for those of you who are gonna be going on and studying a lot of calculus, just out of curiosity, uh, we also have other types of functions that have uh, asymptote type of behavior. Uh, so um, logarithmics um, don't go up as fast as like polynomials and they don't go up as fast as uh, exponential functions. 
So you may want to just pause the video and make sure uh, that you got all this down because these are going to be the tips that are going to kind of guide you through our examples. Special case is the function of E. Um, one thing that we notice here, there's an asymptote, especially going to the left. So if you have an E to the X, so E to the negative big number. So, you know, this is basically like putting in like a, you know, an almost infinite negative number. Like we could just say that this is the limit as x approaches negative infinity of e to the x, uh, that would be zero. And then uh, from a parent exponential function, x approaches positive infinity, that function goes up uh, forever and ever. So this is something uh, useful to know. Okay, uh, so what we have here, uh, I have a graph of this function actually, and you can see what's going on, but we shouldn't have to draw a graph every time. So here's what uh, is going to happen here as we evaluate. Um, so let's say we wanna find the limit as x approaches positive infinity of this function. That is equal to the limit as x approaches positive infinity of 3x squared over x squared. And these cancel. And then this would just be three. Now somebody really astute they would say, oh, the degree of the numerator and denominator are the same. So then they would say, oh, okay, uh, then that limit would just be, you know, three over one, which would just be equal to three. So they took the ratio of the coefficients. So the good news is if you know these asymptote properties and you extend them to limits as x approaches plus or minus infinity, the amount of time that you need to spend, you know, computing this limit actually almost zero because it's just a quick application of these rules. And you can kind of see on the graph here what's going on. You know, as we go forever to the right or forever to the left, we are approaching positive three. Uh, let's look at some other situations. Um, let's look at like this top example here. Um, Y'all want to have it in standard form. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, one thing that we notice here on this one, we could make the observation that the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. And right off the bat, that means that your limit is zero. Why that is? Well, here's what's going on. Uh, this is basically the same thing as doing the limit as x approaches negative infinity. So your exponents, the highest exponents are always gonna kind of like dictate your numerator and denominator. and so like these are like the dollar bills and the X and the plus three stuff or the X plus 14 stuff is like your change. So here we're doing properties of exponents. Remember we subtract our exponents here. So this would be three X to the negative one, or you could say that this is the limit as X approaches negative infinity of three over X. Now, if you put three over like, you know, a really, really big number, so like three over negative big, 
You may kind of see this in your worked out delta math. It's practically zero because you're comparing three to infinity. I mean, that's like a very small speck in the sand compared to infinity. All right, I'm gonna kind of do the one way uh, for this one. Uh, some people act, may actually immediately see that the degrees are uh, exactly the same and they would just be able to read two thirds. And ultimately, you know, we do at the end of the day care that you just compute the limit, but I wanna kind of show you how this works. And X approaches infinity of 2X squared over 3X squared. These cancel. We get the limit of a constant, which is uh, 2 thirds. That's equal to 2 thirds. And in this one, uh, what's kind of going on, uh, this would be your D and E because your degree of your numerator is bigger than the degree of the denominator. So this is sort of your level one of these type of limits here. All right, uh, let's kind of look at a uh, more difficult example now. Uh, I wanna kind of throw just a few of these at you. So we'll go to our delta math actually for this one. So we're gonna do limits to infinity type two. Um, with these, we have a radical. So what's going on here, basically, I'm gonna use the annotation tool here, I'm gonna show you what's going on. Make sure we're kind of um, just focusing on those highest exponents. We're just gonna simplify this a little bit. So we have radical of 25 x to the sixth over eight x cubed. Now, this radical means that you divide the exponent by two. So, I have five X cubed and make sure you keep that limit notation in there. This is X approaches positive infinity of five X cubed over eight X cubed. These cancel and you're just left with the limit as X approaches positive infinity of five over eight. This would be five eighths. Let's see what happens. And you can kind of see they're worked out. They highlight that highest exponent as the green term, uh, ignore the lower order terms, and then simplify the radical. So uh, just by kind of focusing on those highest exponents, dealing with that radical, you turn something that's both radical and fractional into a very doable limit. You know, something that does not even require factoring and just good reasoning. Now this only works for, you know, limit as X approaches infinity or X approaches negative infinity. Let me show you just uh, one more thing uh, that goes on sometimes. Um, if you have a situation like this, uh, you may want to just focus on multiplying the numerator and uh, denominator. Uh, you could even just focus on like the highest exponent terms. So like I know that when I cross these, I get that that's like negative um, 14 X cubed. And I know that like down here, when I multiply those, I get um, divided by 
negative 12 x cubed. And it really, I mean, if you want to multiply everything out and put in the standard form, you can, but you're going to be saving time by just focusing on uh, the highest exponents. Um, so congratulations, uh, calculus scholars. You are now, uh, we've been through you know, pretty much all the limit units and you are now uh, the foremost expert on limits in the school.